This just in. We have some breaking news for you this morning. Not more than 10 hours ago from the time of this recording, the popular Sublime Text Editor announced version 3 beta. Now, the first thing you need to know is that this is limited to registered members. So that means if you are using the free version and you just haven't gotten around to purchasing a license just yet, you won't be able to experiment with these new features. However, if you have forked over the dough, you can download the version 3 beta, enter your license code, and then you're all set to check it out. So you can refer to the Sublime Text blog to take a look at some of the new features, or you can go to sublimetext.com slash three to download the latest build for either OS X, Windows, or Ubuntu. Let me show you a couple of the incredible new features. Let's go ahead and boot up Sublime Text 3 beta. And you can see I downloaded this beta 10 hours ago and already there is a new release. So this is why people love Sublime Text so much. I'm gonna go ahead and install that right now. Okay, let's try that again. Now, the first thing I want you to notice is as soon as I click on that app, it will open more or less instantaneously. There is no load times whatsoever. Let's try it out. Double click and it's open. So we are honestly talking about a half a second open. Let's try it again. Double click, open. So that's improvement number one, immediate load times. Next, I wanna show you the new feature go to definition, which you can access from go to, go to definition. Now, if I click on that by itself, or I can use the Mac command, option, command down, nothing's going to happen. In order for it to work, we need to be on top of a class or an interface or a method name. Let me give you an example. Here I have a simple testing project for a Laravel framework, but you can use anything you want, of course. And let me just grab a controller, something like this, home controller. Now, of course, I can hit command KB, and you'll notice that this time, rather than instantly disappearing and reappearing, it uses a bit of animation. Next, to use the go to definition feature, I'm simply going to place my cursor within some kind of interface or class or method name, and I can either go to go to, go to definition, or I'm gonna press option command down, and you'll see that it instantly takes me to the class that my cursor was in. So you can imagine how incredibly convenient this is. If you're thinking, all right, well, home controller extends space controller, and I'd love to know what methods I have access to, well, just put your cursor right there, command option down, and you're immediately there. And the same thing for controller, command option down, and now you can see, in this case, there are multiple classes with that name. So I can filter through the ones that I need most. Now this also works for method names. So let's open up something very simple like a dog controller. And you can see, all right, well, we have view make. If I'd like to know a little bit more about how the make method works, well, once again, command option down, and you'll see every place where that's referenced, and I can take a look at that implementation. What about this one here, this db get all? Now, in this case, I'm implementing an interface, so that means there might be multiple classes that offer this method. Well, now I can see, okay, there's an array dog, there's dog repository, there's an eloquent dog that offers that. Excellent. And again, the same thing if I want to see, well, what is this dog repository? What sort of contract does it define? Exact same thing. Command, option, down, and now I'm there. Now, in addition to go to definition, we have a go to symbol and project. So this time, instead of pressing command R, you can press shift command R on the Mac. And now you can see a list of all of the global symbols. And if we need to investigate any of them, how about JSON formatter? Now it'll take us immediately to that file. So those are the two new go-to features. And I think especially for go-to definition, that's going to be incredibly helpful. It's one of those things that you traditionally get in an IDE, but now doing so in Sublime Text is possible and it's incredibly fast. Next, I'd like to show you about groups. You likely know that you can go to view, layout, and you can create multiple columns. And on the Mac, I can use a combination of option, command one, two, three, and four. So if I hit option, command two, now I have two panes, three, four, and five to create a grid. If I wanna go back to a single one, I can press command option one. This is all very normal stuff. But now we have this option to use groups. And you can see we have a group tab, focus group, and move file to group. So this might take you a moment to understand the difference. Let me give you an example here though. Let's just go ahead and pull in this sample interface right here. And now instead of pressing command option two, Instead, we're gonna use groups and new group, or I can press command K up. So let's try it. We have our dogs controller. Now I wanna have two panes. So here I will press command K up, and now notice that that will create two panes and immediately move the current tab 
over to that new pane. Now, if you are watching, though, you probably saw this section at the bottom, Maximum Columns. Now, this is pretty neat. This specifies that we can continue adding more panes, but we can tell Sublime Text to lock it down at a certain number. So why don't I change this to 3, and we'll bring this back to one tab. Now I will press Command-K up to create a new tab. And next, let's grab something else, maybe some kind of array input. That's fine. And now if I press it again, Command-K up, that will add a third tab. Now let's bring that back though, and if I go back to view, groups, now I can say, no, at max, I just want to have two columns. So now when I press it, Command K up, it's going to retain two columns and add the third one down here. I'll show you. Command K up, and now notice that it's been added there. And this will continue dividing for as many times as you press it. The key is that when you specified a maximum number of columns, Sublime Text knows not to exceed that number, and then at that point to begin dividing it horizontally. Now at this point, to move around these tabs, I can either go to View, Focus Group, or I can use the basic Shift Command left bracket and Shift Command right bracket to switch around. Now what happens if I'm finished with one of these? Well, rather than Command K up, I can just press Command K down. I'm done with it, put it down. Command K down, and now I'm back. Command K down, and now I'm back. Or you could hit Shift Command 1 to do the single layout. And that's probably what I would do. So those were the three main things I wanted to show you. It's significantly faster. GoToDefinition is now faster than in any editor available. We have a new GoToProject symbol option, and now managing groups of panes is as easy as it's ever been. If you'd like to view the full list of changes, again, go to sublimetext.com three, and then definitely come back to NetTouch and let us know what you think about it. I'm curious to hear.